This past week, an impulse buy led me down an unexpected path of cross-cultural martial arts exploration. And, um, Mike, so how is this not just a big kitchen knife? So you know from the title, we're talking about Cold Steel's take on an Argentine facon. The primary survival knife utility tool sidearm of the gaucho. Now, like many Cold Steel interpretations, they went for big and overbuilt. So before we get into, well, did they get their traditional facon right, and, and what exactly is a facon, wanted to go ahead and go over specs and build quality. According to the Cold Steel website, the blade is made out of 1090 high carbon steel. My test files rate the hardness somewhere between 55 and 60 HRC, which is not bad. But I do believe that this particular knife was one of their Made in India products. So it came to me with a really awful secondary bevel, especially on a knife you would expect would have a really keen edge. And I have partially improved it with a bit of apple seeding, because I couldn't get it to cut much at all when I first got it. So there's a con for you. Let's take a look at where it is at now. Paper cutting, not so bad. It's not shaving sharp. How about a little cardboard? Okay, wide knives like this do bind going through material like cardboard. Again, I could make it better, but the edge it came with was, well, I would say, unacceptable. Disappointing factory edge aside, the rest of the build is actually really impressive. So let's get the specs out of the way, and I'm going to be looking down at my notes so I can give you the metric as well as the Imperial, starting with 12-inch blade, about 30 centimeters. It's about 2 inches wide, about 5 centimeters. Grip, not including the bolster about 5 inches, 13 centimeters, add the bolster in, you get an overall length of 17 and a half inches, 44 and a half centimeters. Now thickness its spine. Website says 5 millimeters, my calipers say a shave less, maybe 4.75 millimeters-ish. This is also the first look you're getting at the jimping on the spine, which surprised me. I had only seen pictures from the side, I figured there was just some side scalloping, didn't expect it to be cut like this across the back, which gives the spine almost kind of a spinal column looking appearance, but it's very well finished, so it feels great when you choke up on it. Speaking of feels great when you choke up on it, it does have the traditional relief cut at the base of the blade, so again, you can get your fingers nice up and high here for fine work. I expected this to be sharp and uncomfortable, and it absolutely is not. Very smooth, no hot spots. Speaking of smooth and no hot spots, grip made of, according to the website, Malaysian salwood. I don't know anything about salwood. If you've got more information on salwood, please put it in the comments. It's got some nice ribbing on it. Keep the knife from rotating in your hand. Grip is kind of oval, and we'll talk about how that taper functions. Bolster and end cap made of steel that has been nickel silver plated. Now the bolster is very well finished with the blade countersunk into it, very smooth, nothing uneven, no gaps, no hot spots. Feels, feels great up here in the hand when you choke up on it. Except for maybe this scalloped ring, which I think is functionally extra grippy, matched by one on the, on the butt cap. Now, what you're seeing here, I believe, is rat tail construction threaded with a lock nut in here. I haven't tried to take it apart. I think it may actually be epoxied together because so far in the tests I've run, everything stayed nice and tight, no looseness, no rattle. Weight. Yeah, it is a bit chunkier than, well, the kitchen knife that it looks like. Speaking of the kitchen knife that it looks like, a lot of the traditional designs, this is something this one's missing. A lot of traditional designs for this blade shape would have a partial false edge bevel back here. And then this one doesn't have it. So, yeah, it makes it, makes it look more kitchen knife-like. But weight, 18 ounces. 
So heavier than a kitchen knife, but, but not unwieldy. 510 grams. Point of balance, about an inch north of that bolster. So let's talk about handling, function, and yeah, a little bit of, well, what's a facone? As a good transition into the subject of form and function, let's take a look at the sheath that it came with, which is a pretty traditional design. Nice thick leather stitched on the side that is visible when you're wearing it, which is also traditional. Sizable metal shape with scalloping patterns, kind of matches the rest of the theme of the knife. Knife will go into the sheath in either orientation, no problem. Retention, not too tight, not too loose. Also, it's a nice touch, especially for what I'm assuming is a Made in India blade, that it doesn't have that white desiccant powder in there that gets all over everything. Though, you do hear just a little bit, sometimes a little bit of rattle uh, from the scalloping of the jimping as it goes in and out that, that might cause wear over time. Don't think it's going to be a big problem. But let's talk about the particular design of the sheath, because it speaks to how the knife is worn and, and deployed. Now, a gaucho might carry two knives. The larger facone and a smaller, say five, six inch, and I hope I'm pronouncing this remotely correctly, verijero. The smaller knife is worn shoved through the belt or sash in the front, much like a Japanese tanto, whereas the larger facone is inserted through the back of the belt or the sash, worn diagonally across the body. And because of that, it doesn't have a belt loop. What it's got instead is a flap. Now, if this was an all-metal scabbard, that would be a hook. But here it's just a simple stiff leather flap, and it works, as we'll see, remarkably well for the job. It allows you to put the knife on, take it off, shift around the angle depending on how you're going to wear it and draw it. Yeah, it works really well for being a very simple thing. The other thing you'll see is this flap, which I feel serves two pretty important purposes. Purpose one, since this is being worn very close up against your body, sweat guard, basically protect the knife from you. Second, shield to protect you from the knife. This is going to be worn behind you when you go to resheathe it. You can't really see what you're doing, right? So this gives you a platform that you can make tactile contact with and then insert the knife without accidentally stabbing yourself. So simple, but pretty brilliant. So did Cold Steel create an authentic facone? From my very limited research, I'm going to say yes and sort of. Sheath, I think they got that right. Blade, well, we'll talk about the overall size of the thing here in a second. But this distinctive kitchen knife looking blade shape, definitely seen on that smaller very harrow. Again, we're talking about utility knives used in the field for everything, including, yes, food prep, and sometimes even using as a utensil to eat with in lieu of a fork. The larger facone, same and more. So yes, might be shaped like this. Might also have the addition of a false edge, especially in its role as a defensive or offensive sidearm. And in that role, it might take different shapes. Also depends on, well, what it was made out of, what was available to the smiths. Many fighting facone were made out of cut down machete or swords or bayonets, tended to have straighter blades. I will put up some pictures of historic examples and yes, cross guards to protect the hand. Perhaps more similar to this rifleman's knife in many ways. And yes, the facone is considered one of the potential ancestors to the Bowie or, or Bowie knife, if you prefer to pronounce it that way. But I use the term sidearm because the gaucho did not have the same access to firearms that their North American counterpart, the cowboy, had. So they used what they had, what they carried. So yes, knives. Also, their short whip their bolo, and even their poncho, and use them in various, very effective combinations. In a still living martial art called Escrima Criolla, 
and I probably didn't do any justice at all to that pronunciation. But what I'm going to try to do justice to is a shout out to Jorge Prena. I'll put a link in the description below to his channel. Absolutely check him out. He's got a lot of information and demonstrations of this living pragmatic martial art. He's also written a few books. I ordered one. It's on the way. But let's talk about the role of the Facon as a weapon. Again, for good information and demonstration of Esprima Criolla, check out Jorge Prina's channel. Researching a knife that I bought on a whim, I didn't expect to find the treasure trove that I did. Especially being a student of, shall we say, cross-cultural martial arts. So I'm glad I bought the knife that sent me down the path. I'm also glad I bought the knife because I find I like it a lot more than I thought I would. Right now, worn through my belt diagonally across the back, it's really nice to pick up, put on, take out, and do stuff with. Access, and yes, that flap does allow me to put it away without stabbing myself. Also, since it's just shoved through my belt, I can rotate it around and draw it with my other hand. And because it's just shoved through my belt, it goes on and off really easily. Now, as a utility knife, I already talked about how, well, the edge needs some improvement for fine slicey work, but I do like the ways I can choke up on it, and it has survived some heavier knife utility tasks. As a martial knife, though, in Escrima Criolla, you tend to see these used alternately as, shall we say, a knife and a short sword. As a knife, close quarters stabbing weapon. Very pragmatic, practical, and yes, effective. Don't have a guard on this one, so not a lot of hand protection, but that relief cut does prevent your hand from sliding up the blade. Taper of the grip combined with these scalloped rings gives you good retention. Shape of the grip, especially when you're choking up on it, gives you good blade indexing for, well, when it's extended to use more like a short sword again to cut slash tip cut. You can also use the false edge and even the flat for different kinds of strikes, interceptions, parries, and things like that combined with thrust. This reminds me a lot of what I see in other kinds of swordsmanship. But lightness of this blade in the balance makes it really quick and comfortable to move around. No doubt about that. But lack of mass in the blade reduces its authority in cutting. Took it out to do some cutting, thrusting, great. Tip slashing, devastating. But full blade cut through target, yeah, I don't know how much was me, how much was this edge. And how much was the lack of mass in the blade? I really had to muscle it to get it through targets at all. I probably will do a comparison video soon. This versus some of Cold Steel's other 12-inch-ish blades that are more massive in, in the blade. But to be continued. However, I do like the lightness, the quickness. Also adds into how comfortable it is to carry. So it's not a heavy knife. Can it be used in the reverse grip? Jorge Prina demonstrates, well, Mike, Mike tends to use his finger flip. Uh, Jorge uses what a lot of other martial artists use, which is the pinch grip flip. With this particular knife, though, I'm going to say the design does get in your way. Or maybe it's just me. Combination of my short fingers and this wide serrated end cap. Um, when I'm doing a pinch flip, that just snags in my hand. Now watch Jorge do it. He's, he's really smooth. But in the reverse grip, this blade is the length of my forearm. So in martial arts that use weapons like this, yeah, you could, you could see where it could be used. Now, a quick note on the belt of the gaucho, which could be more of a woven sash, which reminds me a lot of a Japanese kaku obi, or a leather belt, or combination of both. I'll put up some pictures of historic examples. Some of them you're going to see might have big belt buckles, or they might also be ornamented with lots and lots of coins. And traditionally speaking, 
Uh, it serves a couple of different purposes. One, it's your wallet while you're traveling if you need some cash. Two, especially for those special occasions, a display of your wealth to impress people. And three, yeah, having a lot of metal down here would give you a little bit of body armor. Great use of your cash, I would say, but why would you need metal down here? All right. So pragmatic use of the knife, especially in combinations with other handy implements, especially knife and poncho. Reminds me a lot of sword and cape, or dagger and cape in Hema, where you could use the poncho in the left hand to swing and briefly entangle or snap it at your opponent's face to briefly blind them, make them flinch, so you can come in with the knife at close quarters. Or quickly wrap it around your arm as a shield. Now remember, those poncho tend to be made out of some pretty heavy wool. It's a heck of a shield to let you get in and use this up close. And if something got through your guard that way, you can see where, yeah, maybe having some metal down here is a good idea, right? But other combinations I saw that were pretty fascinating. You might shift the knife into your left hand and use your whip in your right, especially if you don't really want to hurt the person too badly. Or a bolo, which is basically weights on the end of long, sturdy cord. And while they're using it, it reminded me a lot of what I've seen in Japanese martial arts in terms of kusarigama, chain and sickle or maybe Kyoketsu Shogi, where you've got something long that you can swing and strike with or cast out and entangle the person, and then you've got a good solid blade for close quarters work. Brilliant. So combinations in play in Escrima Criolla, yeah, really glad I discovered this path. And this knife, I, I just kind of like it. Needs a little work, a couple of drawbacks to it, but it's already getting kind of long, so let's get our conversation going. As always, if you have any questions about this, any more information on the Facon Esclima Criolla, definitely want that info. So let's go ahead and get our conversation going. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, following my journey, subscribing to the channel, liking the video, sharing the videos, adding to our conversation, and I hope to see you back for, well, wherever this journey takes me next.